In today's episode of the Pathroom Presents podcast, I have a very interesting guest here with me today. I'm with Dennis Consorti, and he is actually holding a couple of hats. He is uh, heading up uh, Consorti Marketing, uh, but also, and this we're going to be learning about today, uh, is holding a couple of hats at digital.com and uh, one and one life. So marketing is definitely his fuel. So we're going to be learning today about how he's working with his clients and what Consorti Marketing is all about. So Dennis, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. It's great to talk to you, Lucas. Awesome. Yeah. So, so give us a, a 360 overview. What is Consorti uh, Marketing all about? Uh, and maybe also sort of tell us a little bit about your engagement with these other companies so that people can get a picture of, you know, what you are doing on a daily basis. Consorti Marketing is a digital marketing consultancy, and I target uh, purpose-driven startups and small businesses. So my skill set includes digital marketing and also a lot of operations stuff. I, I've run different organizations and took my learnings from them. And now I can help my clients beyond just the marketing side of things. So I also work with, uh, as you mentioned, uh, many companies. The ones that are on my LinkedIn profile include digital.com and one in one life. Uh, digital.com is a, an online review site. And I'm one of their subject matter experts, which means I get to put my name on a bunch of stuff and, and talk to the press when we get publicity. One and One Life is a health and wellness platform. And I'm the chief operating officer there where I work with the internal team in order to provide the leadership that they need, again, from a marketing perspective. Interesting. Um, so a broad range of companies there, but you mentioned also that focus on purpose-driven uh, software companies that you're working with and startups that you're working with. Tell us a little bit more about this. Like, you know, what types of purposes for that matter do you really um, engage with typically? Is that, um, yeah, maybe tell us a bit more about so people can get a better understanding um, of who, what you, who you're working with. Yeah, this brings me back to uh, maybe five years ago, something like that where I had tons of customers, so many clients, uh, lots of people working at my company, uh, lots of clients who had many needs. And I had to touch all of those accounts because uh, I didn't build the right infrastructure at the time. And it drove me crazy. It was too much stuff. And I was taking every client under the sun, uh, no matter what their product was and no matter what their purpose was. And I needed to take some time off after that. The whole thing collapsed because it, it just wasn't what I really wanted. And I took some time off and I realized that, you know what, life is short. So if we're going to be spending so much time doing work, it might as well be stuff that we enjoy. Most people spend the majority of, of their daytime hours working. So when I do that, I want it to be for a company that has a clear purpose behind it and is aligned with my personal values. So for example, uh, One in One Life is a health and wellness company and that's super important stuff. I've had my own uh, challenges with my health and wellness, uh, often related to entrepreneurship because we live a very different life than uh, most people do. Uh, and being able to work with a company like that just brings me so much joy I can help others get past some of the hurdles that I've had to overcome myself. Yeah. Okay, that, that makes it very tangible, very understandable. And it's, it's quite cool, actually, that you take the own purposes that you care about and bring that back into the companies you're working with. That's exciting. Um, out of those companies, those startups, like who would you be typically be, be working with, right? And are you kind of like working as a... Hmm, intermediate um, CMO? Are you, is the CMO bringing you in? Is there maybe no CMO if you're coming in? Like what's sort of the, the setups that you typically in? I meet them where they're at. So some companies already have in infrastructure. They already have funding. They already have a team either in-house or of consultants. And other companies don't have any of that. So I meet them where they're at and I figure out what they need and I help them to achieve it. Uh, some companies where they already have an internal team, they just need some direction in terms of what to focus on and how to get there and how to plan things out, uh, how to look at the resources they do have and 
prioritize things, uh, how to spend their budget wisely, uh, and how to hold contractors accountable. That's the operations side of what I do. The marketing side of what I do is providing those services to the companies that want me to actually do stuff. And that uh, my, my core competency as an individual would be search engine optimization and pay-per-click advertising. Uh, that, that's what I'm really good at. Uh, I also do other stuff, uh, everything from email marketing to social media, everything else. Um, I do those things for my clients, but what I'm finding is that in my own journey, I, I'm moving more into a leadership role and less of a doer role. And I think that should be the journey for every uh, entrepreneur. You should really think about, okay, you know what? You can do stuff all day long and you can be happy with it. If that's what you want, power to you. But if you want to grow something uh, amazing, then you need to be, um, you need to have an abundance mentality and say, you know what, I can work with other people. I can bring them into my ecosystem and we can all grow from this. So that, that's, that's how I look at it. Makes a, makes a whole lot of sense. And I actually can re personally very resonate uh, with what you're, what you're describing. Um, I would be curious, um, and I like to ask these questions to specifically people that are, you know, uh, heading up marketing agencies. How do people hear about uh, consortium marketing? Like what's the journey of somebody getting started? I have a very uh, common story, and that is the shoemaker has no shoes. Uh, I've been doing digital marketing for 20 years. So I get all of my clients through word of mouth and uh, through people discovering me on LinkedIn or on Google, and then digging into some of the projects that I've done, some of the content that's out there uh, about me, about my company, about the work that I've done with other people. Uh, so I've been very lazy about keeping up my website because it, it just, I don't need it. And also because I'm so picky about the clients that I do bring on. Again, I only want purpose-driven companies that, that increase my joy throughout the day because I'm working with them. So I say no to a lot of companies that come to me because they just don't fit into that mold. Uh, in a perfect world, I, I would go back to wanting to scale my organization more, which would mean revamping my very old website with something more modern, something that um, encompasses more of the things that I've learned over the years in terms of uh, figuring out where a customer is in their buyer's journey, um, driving them to the right content, getting them plugged into the right uh, email sequences, uh, all of those things in a perfect world. Interesting. Um, I want to switch gears a little bit. Right? We learned a little bit about consortium. We learned about how you're thinking about growth. But I want to take the chance because you've been in working with and within many organizations. And what I would be curious, and maybe going a slightly off tangent here a little bit is, but you know, since you've been in that situation of coming in new and coming, bringing in new ideas, like what have you found to be sort of the challenge when as a marketer, you want to bring in innovation? What sort of the typical challenges you're running into? It's always about getting buy-in from the existing team. Mm -hmm. So whenever you're a marketer, you're going to have all of these great ideas and you're going to have clients and some of them will say yes to everything you want. And other ones will do their own research because they, they're used to being the smartest person in the room and they have their ideas. And then it becomes a negotiation in terms of what you think they should do, what they think they should do and what the right answer is. So really, when you're a marketer, you also have to have some understanding of uh, selling ideas to people and building rapport with people. Because every idea you bring, you have to sell to the team. Otherwise, they're not gonna be on board. They're gonna put up resistance and it's gonna make your job a lot harder. So one easy way to do it is to just get a quick win when you get in the door. Do something good for the company that brings them immediate value and that, that 
gets your starting point where they, they begin to trust you. Uh, the other thing is to always tell the truth. Now, I'm not saying that you have to tell them everything about what you did for the past 24 hours. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> but what I am saying is that uh, I will never make a recommendation to a client that I don't believe in. If I recommend a product, a platform, a provider, any of those things, it's because I really believe in my recommendation. And if I think the client is wrong, I, I will do my best to articulate that in the most tactful way possible. Sometimes I, I can't do it tactfully. It's just, uh, I think it's because I grew up in New York, but I do my best to, uh, to always be honest with my clients and to always tell them the truth about what I think uh, should be done and also what's achievable. That makes it very clear. Um... Maybe another type of challenge that we see uh, marketers looking into, obviously, more and more is conversion optimization. You actually mentioned it on your page as well. Um, what have you found to be the biggest challenges for teams that you've been joining in when it comes to conversion optimization from the website? One of the biggest challenges is when there is friction between, let's say, a designer or design team or a founder with a vision for what they want the aesthetics of their brand to look like. And what I do, which is figuring out how to make that design not just look cool, but turn into new business. So oftentimes, th this really just comes from being able to communicate with people and put things in terms of their interests. And working with people so that they don't feel alienated. So if you want a designer to get on board with your ideas that you know are going to improve conversion, then you have to make them part of the story. So if you're pitching, hey, we should move this button or, or change the layout or the colors or something like that, you want to first have a conversation with the designer get some of their ideas plugged into it. And then when you present it to the company, you present it with them as a team. And uh, if you're presenting, you mentioned their name a lot. It's very important, right? You always give people credit so that they feel included and they don't feel like you're, you're stepping on toes. You do that, it's gonna be a much easier conversation than if you were to uh, try to fight everybody on everything. I can tell you've been having a lot of experience where you need to be very considerate. I can tell from the, the, the meaning that you're describing and it's very important to, to take the people with you. Very, very cool. Um, okay, um, on that note, I would love to learn a little bit more about yourself, right? Um, you've been in, in the arena for digital marketing for a while and I'm, I'm curious, right? There's always so much content generated by the day, I guess, uh, every day. Tomorrow there's gonna to be another big flood of our articles coming through um how do you how do you filter like what's the places where you go uh, to read and you know what what's your way of dealing with that information flood let's say uh, the answer is i don't right because again my journey is a journey from doer to leader mm -hmm. uh, there's no way i could learn everything about all of the stuff that's related to the work that i do so my job is to bring people into the fold, to build teams, to bring people who are not just uh, super smart and uh, who, who do the research, uh, but also to bring people who, uh, who have vision and enthusiasm and who believe in the idea and believe in the product or service that you're offering. Again, this is why I only bring clients who are purpose-driven companies. It just makes it easier for me. So uh, I bring people in who, who do that research and they come up with all the great ideas. Now, in addition to that, what, what I'm able to leverage is my experience from, uh, let's say a big picture perspective, meaning you might say, okay, we need to do A, B, C, D, E, and F. I'll look at that and I'll say, okay, in the past, when something similar was done, this was the outcome. Right. And then we have a conversation and we get the best ideas. Mm -hmm. Cool. Since we slowly come to an end of the interview already, I would love to jump into a rapid fire questions. That was a little bit of a surprise for our guests. So um, are you ready for those? I will try. <laughs> Very good. Uh, what's the last book you read? 
The Go-Giver by Bob Berg. It's a great book and you can read it in probably about two hours. It's, um, uh, it's just a really good way to frame how to uh, be a better communicator in a lot of different ways. And he does it through storytelling, which makes it much easier to read than uh, a typical how-to or self-help book. What's the one thing your company is focused on the most at the moment? Purpose-driven small businesses and startups. If there would be no boundaries in tech, what's the one thing you would fix for your role today? Oh, if there were no boundaries in tech, what's the one thing I would fix for my role today? I, I would say um, better frameworks for communicating across uh, different teams and clients. What's the last thing that kept you awake at night about the company? The last thing that kept me awake at night about, about my company mm -hmm. or, hmm, that's a tough question. Uh, I've had insomnia for the past 40 years. <laughs> I, I'm not very good at sleeping through the night. I typically sleep for a few hours and then I take a nap during the day if I need to. Mm -hmm. um, everything keeps me up. Uh, about my company, I'm very happy with, with where things are right now. I've got, uh, if I could tell you about all the stuff that I'm involved in right now, which I can't because there are some NDAs involved, uh, you would be amazed and you'd be like, wow, this is, this is really cool stuff. Um, so if anything, I'm, I'm being kept awake by the excitement related to the projects that, that I'm so fortunate to be involved in. Cool. And, and as a last question, um, actually, I want to refer back to, uh, if you're on LinkedIn, you have a very nice picture at the very top. You're saying, do something today that your future self will thank you for. So what I want to do is I want to flip that around and go back with you into um, your uh, time at uh, Binghamton University, for example, mm -hmm. right? And um, now is your last day, you're leaving education, at least formal education. And I would be curious, what's the one advice you would give yourself? I would say, uh, just listen to people more. Uh, I've become a much better listener in my old age. Uh, when I was younger, I, I knew everything. And, um, and, I, and I also would say that the traditional path is not always the right path for every individual. So in other words, um, although I really enjoyed my college experience, I would say that it didn't really contribute a whole lot to my career path today. So, uh, if I were talking to, let's say, young people today about whether they want to go to college or do something else, I would say, think about what really matters to you and do that. Uh, certainly, if you go to college, you have, um, you have a piece of paper that says you pass the tests, and uh, there, there are many people who uh, put a lot of weight on that. Um, in my world, that's not as important as experience and, uh, and motivation and being able to actually produce tangible results. Um, the other thing I would say is uh, do your best to future-proof yourself because uh, automation is a beautiful thing that makes our lives so much better and it's going to replace many of the jobs that people have today. So think about what you can do in the future in order to be compatible with a more automated world. And as I really appreciate it, you took time from your valuable day uh, with us at Pathmark Presents to give us an insight uh, into your world at Consorti. I wanna give you the last word if somebody would be forgetting all that we discussed and there's just one thing that they would remember about Consorti marketing. What's it that they should remember? Successful startups and small businesses give people hope. That's why I do what I do, because 
in this country and in, and in Germany, we are so fortunate that we have the freedom to do many of the things we want to do. And, and many people have the dream of owning their own business, of uh, achieving great things. And so if you're thinking about uh, starting a new venture, go for it. Thanks a lot for being a guest on Python Presents. Sounds great. <laughs>